Hello everyone and welcome to Best Side Cycling. Today we're going to join me in unboxing my new Brompton. Uh, we're going to walk through it, see what's new and uh, why I got this particular model. So let's get into it. So let's get this unboxing go going. I think this is the first time that I've ever actually unboxed a bike at home. And the Brompton here especially, it's super duper small convenient package. So that's really nice. So yeah. Uh, so we'll see if any of you guys guessed uh, which model I got. So opening up here from the top, we have our main, I presume, parts box with instructions on it, unfolding happiness. And then in here, let's just see really quick. There's of course, yeah, a lot of the essential accessories. You have the saddle with the pentaclip underneath. You have the uh, Brompton pump, as well as the saddle height insert, which is really nice if you want to get it dialed in for how you ride it and then they just give you an owner's manual as well as an allen key for use so i think these are main accessories i think the only other thing that we are needing and missing into the parts is the hinge but i presume hinge clamp i presume that's sort of tied in here but here's the grand reveal so this is uh you guys put a lot of different cases out there in terms of what bike i would get and um it is actually a matcha green sea line. Um, but I have a lot more details about why I got this bike in a second. But here's your first real good look, uh, at least in the box, in terms of what we have here. So now we're going to do the unpacking and setting up process, which admittedly is super simple. You honestly just have to take off the plastic and then put on the saddle. So while I'm slowly doing this, if you've been enjoying this video so far, please don't forget to also roll over the like button and subscribe. I am going to be doing a few more upgrades to this bike as well as riding it to Vancouver later this summer, which I'm really excited to do with my dad. And yeah, setting up the saddle here is pretty simple, but I take a second look at the manual because I think I didn't have my O-rings low enough, um, but it's really actually just all I'm doing here. And just make sure to tilt it a bit lower to, so that it's level when it's fully set up and then you're basically good to go. Then I took it outside for a quick test ride and it just worked really well. Shifting and braking were completely fine. So let's go back inside where I want to talk a little bit more about the bike as well as why I got this particular model. Deeper look at everything. This is the uh, C-Line, so that means it has the six speeds with the um, derailleur with having two speeds and also the uh, internal hub there with another 30. Um, so it's pretty good. It's really similar to the one I had before. Really, the whole setup is super similar except for the uh, low handlebars, which I do think have make the riding experience a lot better for me personally. The only other real difference I've noticed is just the bell. So here, it's a much bigger bell. The old bell here, you'll see, is a smaller one. And then the pitch is pretty different. So I guess that's just personal preference. Now to answer that burning awkward question, why would I get another sea line when I already have this bike, uh, the M6R mid handlebar, and then also with the rack. So those are the main differences. Um, really, it comes down to sort of a few things. Number one, um, I sort of want to get my dad more and more into riding, and he said he is interested in the Brompton, so I think this would be a perfect fit for him. The main thing that for this bike, in terms of my goals with the Brompton and the big rides I want to do, and just riding in general, I think the mid bar is definitely a little bit too high for me. Um, after riding the P line in Hong Kong, um, I'm only five four and a half. So that also plays into it. This is just a much, much more natural position, which I'll show here a little bit on video. And then as well, um, other than that, that's really the main two reasons. Um, beyond that, the, in terms of not having the rack anymore, I found that I didn't use it that, that much. It's pretty helpful if you're really touring and want to add a lot more weight. But here I just sort of um, went out on that as well. I had like a pretty good discount from a former employer on the Brompton so got this for at least 20% off so um, yeah and why the C line and not the T line or P line or whatnot is just about the gearing um, 
I mean, I know I love to climb and you see me climbing, but I do not do really well with uh, just grinding gears. That's for sure. I've learned my lesson from Hong Kong. So uh, if I'm going to do the Seattle to Vancouver or other long rides here in Seattle or do some funny stuff trying to climb up hills, I'm going to need all six speeds. So uh, that's also why. And also, I would just frankly be honest that uh, Seattle's transit is not that great. So um, compared to maybe in a city like New York or something where you're going onto the train all the time or I'm going onto MTR in Hong Kong all the time and you gotta lift this bike. Honestly, the amount of times you probably have to lift up uh, this bike and move it around is way, way less here in Seattle. So I'm actually using this like a lot like a normal bike. Um, so that's also sort of the reasoning. But in the future, who knows? Um, maybe if they put out some more better, more gearing options for the lighter weight bikes, I definitely would be very, very tempted. So, but other than that, it seems pretty solid and excited to um, do a few upgrades in the near future, which I'll also post on this channel, and then get this really ready to go uh, for the 100 mile or 180 mile day. So stay tuned for that, and I'll see you all in the next video.